you look at what the opportunities we have, that if we just stop letting them pass us, we use the opportunities we have, uh, none of those things really matter. You know, and fortunately we got hooked up with the right company and the right places and you know, and then we you know we just worked our butt off. There's not many people in the world that make eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. Okay. So and 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 about ninety percent of that is probably passive residual for you. I mean you don't work as hard as you used to anymore. Most of that comes from your businesses. And if you never worked a day in your life again, you'd still make probably a half a million dollars a year or whatever the, the number is. You get what I'm saying? So to me, you are 100% financially independent. It's just that like we're screwed, uh, we're, we're screwed and skewed. All right, let me, let me make sure I, I clarify that. We're skewed in the brain because of the, the, the environment that we grew up in, Chris, and you know what I'm talking about, is like, we're making a million dollars a year and we're still freaking hungry. Like most people make 50 and they're like, man, I'm, you know, chilling on the couch every day, right? Am, am I right? Right, absolutely, yeah, yeah. It's just staying uncomfortable. Uh, you know, I look at uh, your ability to squeeze the most out of every day is what's gonna, you know, I'm losing a bunch of weight now and I got, I got, I got coached by someone the other day I'm not going to mention his name, but I got coached by someone the other day that really, he told me to stop focusing on hitting all these huge goals, uh, you know, and which I knew this, but sometimes we get all caught up with, you know, I want to accomplish all this. He said, stop focusing on your day-to-day -day goals. Try to squeeze the most you can out of every day. And when I look at all the success we've had, and I look at the people that succeeded in my businesses, uh, they try to squeeze the most out of every day. Most people got something set up. They got something planned. They're going to close something next week. They got a deal come in, you know, uh, it's what you can close to the day that counts, you know, and so we focus on doing that. We focus on putting things in position where every day there's a win, like we're here, uh, you know, right now, you know, uh, working on a different different project, you know, seeing what we can close today, you know, because uh, today's what counts. I love that, man. I love that. Hey, let's talk a little bit about your past, and uh, f first of all, I mean, you grew up in Trinidad, right, and, and then yep. you ended up moving to New York City. And so what was that like, man? I mean, you're an immigrant and tell me like, how was that transition as a young child? How, how did you deal with that? I, I think there was a lot of benefits and you know, obviously there was some challenges, but at 12 years old, my parents said, we're going to the United States. And I was like, cool, we're gonna be rich in the United States, you know, and totally wasn't that, you know, it wasn't the case. Uh, we lived above the laundromat, which uh, if you ever lived over a laundromat back in the days, the laundromats would shake and, you know, and smell like Febreze. I should have invented Febreze, but uh, so you'd walk out the house, you'd be shaking 10, 15 minutes after you get out the house. I mean, that's how we started. In Trinidad, we was, you know, uh, we, we just had a little bit of money. We didn't have, we wasn't uh, poor, but we had a little bit more than most. And, you know, and I learned a lot from my parents in terms of giving back and just, you know, and then we came to the United States and, you know, started going to school, which totally, you know, it didn't work really well for me because we, we, we had this thing in our head of, creativity you know I think one of the things that successful people have that we don't use enough is our creativity uh, and that's what separates us from everything else and as a kid we just got really creative and you know so we brought that into business and sometimes it got us in a little trouble you know uh, I never never was able to step over the line but I definitely stepped on the line a couple of times just because of personality purposes <laughs> reasons uh, but uh, we're, we're always excited about the you know just a lot of the things that we learned as you know as kids growing up, uh, you know, it, it was a challenge in the United States, but you know we've we've kind of made it work a little bit. Hey, were were you, were you a bad kid growing up? Um, yes. Yes. Okay. Good. Absolutely. Good. 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 And, and so, so why were you? Why do you think you were a bad kid growing up? Because I was too, by the way. I was a bad kid growing I, up. I wasn't too. bad. I was just uh, you know um, I was putting myself in a position where I was creative, and so I liked having fun. I didn't really do like stuff where I would hurt people, but I would do a lot of stuff uh, just to, you know, get out of trouble. Give, give me an example. Give me some examples of bad stuff you did when you were young. I would, I would disappear a lot, you know, so I was, I was into uh, getting up and just, you know, uh, leaving the house and not coming back for sometimes a day and a half, you know, uh, we got into a lot of fights. Um, I mean, that was normal uh, in, uh, you know, cause there was nothing else to do with fight. That's how the environment you grew up in. Even when I got here, United States it was the same thing too sometimes you know uh, people mock people from certain environments but the the fact is uh, you know uh, peer pressure always wins uh, you know you it's really hard to fight peer pressure so you have to get in the right environment 
where it's the right peer pressure. You're, not, you're never going to be able to fight it. Uh, you just got to get in the right environment. So when we was in the wrong environment, it won. But then we, when we made a decision to get in the right environment, cut off a lot of people and a lot of environments of people that, that are settled and they just want to stay still. Uh, you know, we started accomplishing a whole lot more. And we started realizing a lot of the things that was against us in the beginning, we was able to use those as strengths to help us uh, really dominate in business. And, you know, like we, we never blink, we never get nervous, we never get scared uh, because, you know, uh, some of these things in businesses, you know, you just lose money. You don't really lose yourself, uh, you know, if you know what I mean. Uh, you know, it's cool that you can lose money and not lose yourself. Sometimes in the wrong places, you can lose money and yourself, okay? Right, right, awesome. right. So, but but so, so growing up, growing up was tough though, right? I mean, so you moved to this new country and you're, uh, you know, it's New York. What part of New York was it? Uh, Brooklyn. Brooklyn, Brooklyn, yeah. So I mean, you know, it's 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 probably a rough. Was it a little bit rough part of town? I mean, uh, yeah. She, you know, it was extremely rough. You know, it was in the days of uh, when Biggie Smalls and all these guys grew up. When Jay Z was the real Jay Z, not the new Jay Z. Okay? Right, uh, right, right. Jay -Z. Uh, I went to school with both of them actually. So you know, it it just uh, it was it was a different environment. You know, it was it was a fight every day, so to speak, just to you know stay positive and do the right things. Uh, but if you if you if you look at what the opportunities we have, that if we just stop letting them pass us and we just keep, we use the opportunities we have, uh, none of those things really matter, you know, and fortunately we got hooked up with the right company and the right places and, you know, and then we, you know, we just worked our butt off. Yeah, so. And so, so then now, so you're getting a little bit older. How did you get into business? How did that all start? I had a friend that, uh, you know, was in a financial business and she told me I should come take a look at it. And at first, uh, you know, um, I didn't fit in. I didn't see myself being a suit guy or anything like that. I just saw myself as being maybe a laborer or someone that, you know, that, you know, worked for someone. Uh, but I said, you know, let me give it a shot. And it was an opportunity to actually learn about investments and insurance and stuff like that, which I never, you know, I never knew that you're supposed to learn about that stuff. So it kind of shocked me, but it, it just kind of made sense. If I could learn that, maybe I won't make money in that field. If you like this video and you want to watch another one, click right here.